sell your hair, clamored sweet sellers in Seoul in the 1950s. The capital of South Korea had been pulverized by a three-year war with North Korea. Southern women were cutting off and selling their dresses, typically worn in a long play or a low bun, for dollars, rice and rubber shoes. The hawkers sold the jet black locks to wigmakers in Guro, a district of southwestern Seoul that was home to the first industrial complex built in South Korea after the war for the export market. A year into the fighting, half of the country's factories were in ruins. In the 1960s, thousands of female laborers soaked, stitched and styled the hair of their destitute countrywomen in Guro's factories. The wig industry in South Korea has proved remarkably resilient. Today it is South Korean women who are its fastest growing source of demand. They snap them up for $1,000 apiece from Haimo, a maker of custom wigs that began business in 1987 as an exporter and now dominates the domestic market. Haimo Lady, a sister business, began five years ago. Its wigs and toupees are made in China with Chinese hair, mixed with a durable synthetic fiber of Haimo's own called NEXART. Demand from other countries remains huge. Fifty years after exporting their first hair pieces, South Korean-run factories, almost all of them abroad, still weave the majority of the world's wigs, says Lee young jen of the Korean Wig Association. The wig business in South Korea has played a lustrous role in the country's development. By the end of the 1960s, wigs made up roughly one-tenth of South Korea's total exports by revenue. In the next decade they became its third most exported product, after textiles and plywood. One-third of the wigs worn by Americans in those years are thought to have been made in South Korea It benefited from an anti-communist ban on Chinese hair in 1965. It was then a state-sponsored industry and emblem of Dirigismi under Park Chung-hee, a dictator who seized power in a coup in 1961 and ruled for 18 years. Wigs turned into a symbol of South Korea's struggle to put an end to rule by such strong men. Among Park's cheerleaders was YH Trade, a wig maker that was founded in 1966 with 10 workers and expanded to 4,000 within four years. It quickly earned a state prize for excellence in exports. In 1979, due to heavy debts, it sacked hundreds of workers. Around 180 of them staged a sit-in to demand compensation police storm the factory, and a 21-year-old protester died from beatings. Among the demonstrators was Kim Young-sam, a legislator who let them use his party's offices. In 1993 he became South Korea's first civilian president in the democratic era. Kim kyung suk the protester who died, was like millions of others who left the countryside in the 1970s for Seoul she began factory work straight after primary school. Her wages, which she sent home, helped put her younger brother through secondary school. She often stitched wigs until 4 a.m. One of her co-workers says they were worked like machines. Some became addicted to the stimulants that they were given to stay awake. Part of the reason that YH closed was that the wig industry was growing new roots. In the 1980s, as South Korea grew richer and wages soared, plants were moved to China and Southeast Asia. In today's South Korea, the ordeal of workers like Kim now seems otherworldly. The country's GDP per person, 